I think everybody that enters the industry, and this is obviously something that, you know, my wife and I spoke about at length when we were making the decision to, to take this job in the first place was, you know, sometimes coaching takes you places and, you know, you don't always have control over that. And um, I think everybody that gets into the industry understands that. Um, and, and listen, it's, listen, this is all very new. And, and, you know, we found out 30 minutes before everybody else found out. And so um, I think there's, there's lots of decisions to be made. You guys know, I, obviously I have a relationship with Sean, but I also have a relationship with the organization and with right. Mickey. And, and what I really think is that whatever Mickey decides will be the right thing for the New Orleans Saints organization. It'll be the right thing for the fan base. I mean, if you don't trust that guy at this point, I, you're, you're a lost cause. You know, he's just made a lot, of, a lot of really good decisions over the years, and I'm sure that he'll handle it the right way, and the organization, um, you know, will move on just fine. And, you know, Sean's a big part of that, and he mentioned that, um, you know, today in his press conference that, you know, he's leaving the organization better than he found it, and there's no question. You know, it's the, the organization's stability. Now, granted, he was a big part of that, um, but the way that the, that the organization is perceived, the functionality of the, of the organization is as good as anywhere in football. So, you know, it's obviously not up for me to decide, and, you know, we'll all wait and see together. Um, you know, the, the only conflict for me is I love the organization as much as I love Coach. And, uh, you know, so there's, those two things are going to kind of go separate ways at this point, and we we'll kind of deal with that as we go. You saw Coach come in first time he had ever been a head coach. The changes in him are the bigger, biggest changes you saw with him and at the end of your career because everybody sort of evolves. In any job they do, there, there is an evolution along the way. What was the biggest changes you saw with Sean um, as a first-year head coach, second-year head coach, and then toward the end of your career? You know what I really I, – what I, I always felt was, was really kind of – Sean's superpower was his ability to adapt to the environment around him. And, and by that, you know, yes, early on in Sean's career, things were very different. You know, camps has been, you know, discussed ad nauseum how hard some of the things that we did were. And, and yet at the same time, Mike, I think a lot of that was a product of the environment in the NFL at the time. So players coming out of college at that time were used to that. You know, you could push, you could, you could drive guys. You could have that kind of edge about you, make people uncomfortable. And yet as time has gone on, you could say that Sean has changed. But I think what really has happened is that Sean has adapted to the players of today I got you. and the environments that these players are coming from and, and the style of programs that they're coming out of. And I think that's always been his greatest gift is his ability to adapt. And so you say, well, he's changed a lot of ways. In almost every way he's changed. And yet, did he really change or has he always just had this really great innate ability to adapt and to change with the times um, and to know his team and to know what his team needed and to be able to give it to him? You know, I think that's really where a lot of those change has stem, changes have stemmed from. You know, if you'd ask a guy in 06, I don't know they would have identified Sean as a quote-unquote players coach or a guy that the team, you know what I mean? It was, it was more like, man, this guy's out of control with some of this stuff. And yet I would say if you asked Alvin Kamara, he feels like he does have that relationship with coach. And I think Sean's just realized that, that that's what is needed for, you know, today's player and today's environment. Um, so there's a lot of changes, almost everything. But, I, I, again, I just think it's part of his abilities. Zach, do you worry about the stability of the team? Is Dennis Allen uh, not just an obvious choice, but the right choice? Uh, wouldn't Aaron Glenn be the right choice uh, when you look at it? Because I can tell you right now, you won't have to move if Dennis Allen or Aaron Glenn's the coach. Well, I, first of all, I'd speak to the stability of the organization. And I, I, and I think Sean made this point uh, several times as well. I don't know that there's many organizations in all sports that are as stable as the Saints are. At the end of the day, I think Mrs. Benson has created and, and has carried on a, an environment where you have an organization that is patient and thoughtful. They don't make rash decisions. They're going to think through this the right way. That, that leads down to Dennis uh, Lausha who I think does a great right. job, you know, making all these decisions fit into the, the Saints from a business perspective. 
and that allows them to let Mickey Loomis make all these football decisions based on football and based on what he believes in. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, as much as so much of this organization was about Sean and things that Sean brought to the organization, right? but so much of that was also rooted in Mickey. And so I don't think without losing the ownership, without losing, you know, Mickey Loomis, I, I think the stability of the organization um, is in really good hands. Now, as far as who's the best person for that job, you know, that's incredibly hard for me to answer. That's hard for anybody to answer. Right. Um, and, you know, here's the thing. I do have experience with uh, Dennis Allen as a, as a head coach, right? Uh, we won a game with him, beat the defending Super Bowl champs, but yep. nothing with him. Um, I think he's got a lot of respect in the building. I think, obviously, um, listen, he's a guy that's been a head coach before and definitely wasn't in the fairest of circumstances with the Raiders, who basically blew the whole roster up when he got there. Um, and so, listen, you've got a great you've got a great candidate there. I think I don't think anybody in the building doesn't see Dennis Allen as a very possible um, candidate. And then you talk about Aaron Glenn, and listen, Aaron Glenn was here a year ago. I think Aaron Glenn's a guy that's going to be a head coach in this league at some point. Um, I, I saw a report that they were bringing him in. Certainly no one runs that stuff by me. Um, but, you know, he's a guy that uh, I certainly know I played with. Um, and, and again, it's you, here's your conflict, Bobby. I love I, – I obviously I, – my family is here. My wife is from here. I've been right. here for a long time now, 16 years. I would love to stay. I also want the organization to do what's best for the organization because I love the organization too. So – there's kind of that selfishness, right. and then there's, you know, and, and maybe those two things, you know, match up, Bobby. Maybe what's best for the organization ends up being best for my family as well, and that would be great. Um, but, you know, those decisions will be made here in the coming weeks.